Good evening and welcome to Telltale. This is the next in my Arthur C. Clarke series of videos going through everything I can get my hands on by Arthur C. Clarke in order of publication. And I'm going to have a little difficulty with that because after tonight's story, there's a couple of stories that were not in the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke, two in a row. One of them I was able to find in an anthology, but the other one, to the best of my knowledge, has only ever been published in a fanzine called The Satellite, and there are no copies of that available. Um, there are some copies of The Satellite as PDFs online, but not that particular copy, which is unfortunate because that means there's going to be one story that I simply can't talk about because I have no way of getting a hold of it and have never ever read it, have never ever seen it anywhere. I can't find any information on it being in any other sources. It's just going to have to be skipped. And, and that story is a story that was published in December of 1939 called Into the Past. Hopefully it's just a simple little fan story that isn't all that great <laughs> and I'm not missing much the other one which I as I said I did find that it's actually in a number of anthologies but it's not in the collected stories which is where I'm finding most of Arthur Clarke's work um, it's called At the Mountains of Murkiness and it's based on H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness so I, I bought it's ac actually it, it also appeared in the satellite but that one appeared in March of 1940. PDF of that issue of the satellite is also not available online, but um, there were like seven or eight different Lovecraft theme anthologies that it appeared in. The most recent one is one edited by S.T. Joshi. I found the first anthology, a copy of the first anthology it appeared in, um, published by Chaosium, I think is how you pronounce the, the name. They published a whole series of Lovecraft collections. And uh, I found a used copy of, of one of those. Anyway, tonight's story was published in March of 1938. And it is called Retreat from Earth. And it's a very interesting story. It's not a great story. This isn't a top tale yet, but it is a very interesting story. And it's another one that was published in Amateur Science Stories. This was issue three of, nine, of March 1938. And you can find it if you get a copy of the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke. And uh, basic synopsis is that Martians are looking to colonize Earth. They're looking to take over the Earth. So they send a guy to an investigate in advance and kind of undercover. So nobody here on Earth knows that, that this person is actually a Martian. And he, he goes all around the Earth and, and investigates things. And he, he comes back and is reporting that besides man, there is another highly intelligent race on earth more intelligent than man i'm going to get a little spoilery here from this point on so you might want to skip to the end if if you don't want the spoilers but there are two very interesting things going on here number one is the influence on this story comes from you know clark mentions that it comes from a story that was published in Astounding, which I've never, never read and never heard of. It's, it's by a little known author. But he cites that as his influence. But he also, I also read something else where Clark um, mentions by name David H. Keller's The Human Termites. Okay, and here's the spoiler. That second super intelligent race is termites so you've got a connection here to David H. Keller
but the whole basis, the whole foundation of this story is the idea that there had been a race before man, before the termites also, way, way back in history, which rose up to a great civilization and died out. But they prepared the way for man. They, and once again, spoilery, they, they set the termites on the path towards super intelligence. I mean, they have sciences that are way beyond us today. So they set these termites up as being incredibly intelligent. And they achieve this by guiding the termites. You know, the termites are really just drones. The real intelligence is some kind of robotic intelligence that is controlling all the termites and which is protecting the earth from other alien invaders. So when the Martians come to investigate, the moment the termites realize that this Martian is there, this robot brain kicks them into high gear and blasts the Martians, um, sending the investigator back to his planet to report that invading Earth is probably not a good idea. So the interesting thing here is that idea of a higher intelligence, an, an older, more intelligent race that prepares the way for man, which is something you're going to see repeated in Clark's work in Childhood's End, in 2001, um, way back in his very third story, just a short story, he's already thinking about that, already formulating this idea of this ancient race that leaves behind a technology to guide man towards um, success as a, as a civilization. Which makes this story very much worth reading for anybody who likes Arthur C. Clarke. You're seeing here the roots of many of Clarke's best works. Um, but as I said, this story, it's very 1930s. It's, it's not a top tale. It's good, though. It is a good, enjoyable story. I think, you know, and it's only a short story, so not going to take much of your time. So... Uh, I would recommend it to you if, if you like Arthur C. Clarke and you want to investigate deeper into Clarke's work beyond his famous novels, um, pick up a copy of the collected works of Arthur, the collected stories of Arthur C. Clarke. There's lots of these available used still. And in particular, read Retreat from Earth. It's really a very, very good story. So recommended, just not great. Doesn't cross that threshold into um, brilliance. So I enjoyed the story. I hope you will too. And I hope you enjoy these videos and will like us and subscribe to us and come on back. I have more Arthur C. Clarke coming in the future. Like I said, I already did track down and order the book that has At the Mountains of Murkiness in it. Can't find Into the Past, so I'll be skipping number four, going on to number five. And and then his first really professional public, his first real professional story is coming up. Number six, The Awakening, which had its first publication in a magazine called Zenith. Um, I have read that one before. It's a good story. And um, I hope you'll come back for that and all the rest of the videos I've got. I've got some surprises coming up, I think. So keep coming back and, and stay with me. I'm going to get to some really great, great fiction here. And I'll see you then.